yesterday we had the official launch um, of my uh, DVD edition, we can call it uh, Georgian uh, Trilogy, Trilogy in English, I think. Um, and uh, I just thought it would be also nice to have maybe a little bit of Q&A or more personal event. Yesterday I think there were about 100 people uh, in the writer's house and we had an uh, opening all in Georgian language. But the DVD edition is in three languages, in German, in Georgian and in English. And I just thought it would be smart to talk a little bit about it. And that's why I'm very happy that uh, the Frontline Club gave us this opportunity and invited me to talk here tonight. <coughs> Um, I want to say that for me it's a very uh, emotional event, or I think especially have been the last uh, four weeks or six weeks, because uh, six weeks ago I decided that I would do this, um, because uh, there was no money, there was no sponsor, there was nobody, um, I was just sitting in my kitchen, and I had been asked by Gugi Guajaria, who has a TV show here in, in Georgia, which is called Zita Mizona, and he invited me to speak there, and this will be broadcasted next week. And I said, okay, come on, this is now a chance when I'm in the big show of uh, Georgian cinema. Uh, if people want to see my films, I should have them ready as a DVD. Uh, and then I tried to calculate the whole thing, and uh, it went out even more expensive than I thought. But I said, Stefan, you have lived, been living here, or you know Georgia for 25 years now, you have made three documentary films that have been in the cinema that have totally different stories that are made in a very, very different way, all three documentaries. Uh, but this is the chance now, uh, one time, you have to do that. It will cost you a couple of thousands of euros, uh, but you should do that because it is a present for Georgians, it's a present for people that have to do with Georgia, to one time have something in their hand, maybe on their shelves, and if they want to show somebody else something about Georgia, then they can show three documentaries. Because, um, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about my story that you understand, because I came first here to Georgia in the year uh, 1990. Uh, this was still uh, the time of the Soviet Union. At that time, they had the last uh, secretary of the Communist Party, who um, uh, was at that time uh, uh, there, Kupanitia. Uh, uh, I met him, I did my first interview with him, and the whole chant has been changed. Sviat uh, Gamsapurya became president, I followed up uh, with Sviat Gamsapurya. I made a lot of little pieces, journalistic pieces for the German television at that time. And with all the money that I collected at that time through my journalistic work, uh, I financed my first feature documentary. Because I had come here to Georgia uh, to study. They have a they don't really have a film school here, but they have a film school, which, or a film department, which, is, which uh, is attached to the theater institute. So right from Gustavelli Street, um, there is their theater institute and uh, cinema school. Uh, that's where I went, and I came there. I especially studied Russian to study here. That was uh, obligatory by uh, the German grant for every student who came to the Soviet Union. He had to know Russian. I had no idea about Russian. I had, uh, you have to know, I am coming from the Black Forest, so very close to the French border. My first foreign language was French. So, I, till my uh, 23rd birthday, I had never been in Berlin. All the Eastern countries were a big, big, big red uh, block on the map, which I had never seen before. And so, for me, that was the first time I ever went in this direction. And uh, so, of course, I didn't know a word of Russian. But I had to prove to the authorities that I know enough Russian, so I had to two months of intensive course of Russian before I came here. And then I was put into a train from Cologne. It was locked. For the first time, I was in a locked train. It was locked to go through Eastern Germany, to, through uh, Poland, to Minsk, and so on. The whole, the whole story to Moscow. And in Moscow, they tried to convince me, don't go to Georgia, please stay in Moscow. We have a much better film school. But I had heard about the the interesting Georgian cinema that they have here, about Tengiz Abunadze, about uh, Elda Shengelaya, about Parajanov, so the big names of Georgian cinema. Uh, and people had told me Moscow was much, difficult, uh, much more difficult to make films, you have to go to Georgia. So this is why I ended up here, with knowing anything else but Dynamo Tbilisi, that was known to me, because that's a uh, soccer club of Tbilisi which made it uh, and was a European champ one time. I didn't have any idea else when I came here for the first time. 
arrived, of course, like many people at that time, uh, at a dark airport without any lights. It was also, some of you might have experienced that who flew here into the, in the 90s in Georgia. That sometimes there were no lights at the airport. So all this adventure happened, and when I came to the film school, and, and I asked the dean of the film school, uh, please, uh, I would now like to uh, take part in your school in the lessons that you have in Russian language because I studied Russian for studying here. And then he, he really, he, like a typical Georgian, he took me like that. And then he answered to my Russian and English, my dear friend, we don't have any Russian lessons here, but you will have a very good time. So this was my, this was my starting point, this was my starting point in uh, Georgia. So I ended up not taking one single lesson in this film school the whole year, but instead studying Georgia. And uh, so I studied Georgian, and I had the chance to be with film directors on the set, to work with Ella Shakilaya, to be uh, in the kitchen with Rezo Gabriadze when he was uh, uh, making his little scripts for his plays and for his scripts, which was really interesting. I, um, Tengis Abulazzo was still alive. I was able to meet him uh, two or three times. So for me, it was really a very, very rich experience, uh, which was very important for me. And uh, as I said, I did some little pieces for German television at that time to finance a film which is called Caucasian Banquet. And um, you have to know that I was 24 years old at that time. Uh, and uh, it was kind of my first 19 minute film. And uh, well, four weeks ago, I saw him after a long time. I saw him again. It was filmed on 35 millimeter negative. That means for people not in the cinema, that means. Uh, and I wanted to shoot it in Soviet conditions, so I didn't want to come with Kodak and then do the whole thing in, in Munich or in America or in a good laboratory. I said, I want to do it the Soviet way. Okay, my, my fault. Uh, I did it. So the material had to be brought in by Kiev. We had to pay some money to get the good material and not the bad material. And still, it only had the, amount, the ASA of 30 or 60 ASA. 30 or 60 ASA, you know that if you're doing photography where it starts, usually you start with 100, 200, 400 ASA. So imagine you have to have as much light in a room to film with a film that only has 30 ASA. So we really had like uh, the old Hollywood movies, we had these very, very big lights. And to make documentaries in such an atmosphere, I have never experienced. So it was quite an interesting experience with big cinema lights to try to shoot a very intimate uh, documentary. And uh, the idea in the end was to put all the people that are in the film, because it's different personal portraits in this film. I think it's eight different people that are being um, uh, introduced in the film. Um, two of them are Germans, mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to show um, how Germany, uh, or how Western countries in Germany was quite active at that time, um, how they are looking at the country and what, what they are doing with such a country that is just turning around, right, right, 1990, 91, when everything was just really, the Soviet U Union was uh, falling apart. And there were two Germans, which I think were for me the two uh, Polen, can you say, the two sides of the coin. One of them was Michael Zuko. Michael Zuko uh, later got for the work that he did here, the Nobel Prize, for the alternative Nobel Prize uh, for his work, uh, for creating the national parks for the WWF, ABF. Uh, and so I was able to travel with him with the helicopter to all the different national parks in the country. I was able to film that. And he did it, of course, he's a very, very, uh, he's doing everything from his heart and uh, it's, he's a very, very warm person. And the other person uh, was the first general manager of the Matehi Palace Hotel, uh, which is now called the Sheraton. Uh, but at that time it was the Matehi Marco Polo Matehi Palace Hotel. And he was, uh, how would you, the Germans say, ah, in Latin, I don't know what that would be in English. But smooth. Smooth, very smooth. And he's a very, very smooth uh, guy, I mean, uh, from Frankfurt, uh, who um, uh, always, always travels all around the world. He doesn't really care about the countries and where he is and what language they're speaking. He's just making business. And he's opening up a hotel. As soon as the hotel is, uh, is opened, after a year, maximum, a year and a half, he leaves for the next country. So you had one German that is just coming here for business, making fast money and go, and you had the other one who was working for long-term Georgia. And so these two persons are portrayed, for example, in the film as outsiders, and the other six people are insiders, people of the 1990s in Georgia, and I'd like to show you a little bit. 
ნაგებია რა იქნა აიას დებში რაც საქართველოში ხდება ეს არის ტრაგედია ერის გაჭიშვისა რაც შეიძლება ვერ შეიძლება რა ეთერი ვაშება ვერ შეიძლება ვერ შეიძლება და ვერ შეიძლება ეს არის ის შეიძლება რა ეთერი ავრობა ერის გაშის საქართველო ორად და წაუსია ერთმანეთს
только злая, столько вреда не придется. Он лучший общество. Лучший сын не придется. Ну что ж. Все интеллигенты, все. Все творят. Все официально. Все. Пачками расстроили. Пачками.
So this, this so many emotions for you. If you make a film, although it's 20, more than 20 years ago, you still are so connected and you don't lose the stories. Uh, and so for me, it's very emotional to share this film again. I mean, it, at that time it had premiere in 92, 93. So when there was a fast crisis and everything, so it was at a very dark time when we had the premiere of that film. Um, the, uh, I think maybe we do a QA and a after I will talk about the three films. Maybe we should do it like that. Um, I just wanted to uh, say a couple of things about my second film, which so far is my most uh, uh, successful film I have done. Uh, I mean, I've, I've made about 25, 30 films uh, that have been broadcasted internationally in different countries. But of course, my three Georgian films are emotionally a little bit closer than the others. Um, I mean, one about my, my uh, heimat, my, my home country in Germany, but uh, this, this is still maybe more my heart home country here in Georgia. Um, and this uh, second film uh, is called On the Edge of Time, uh, about male domains in the Caucasus. I know male domains in the Caucasus in English sounds horrible. Um, the German uh, word Männerwelt in Caucasus clings a little, uh, sounds a little bit better. Um, but the whole idea was, uh, it was the year 2000, well, when I came up with the idea, it was still 1999, and uh, Stefan was thinking, what am I doing as for the new century, something big is happening, and the year 2000 is coming up, what am I going to do in the year 2000? And I thought I had experienced so many, uh, I had lived 10 years ago in Georgia, and so on, I hadn't been in Georgia for a while, but I had very uh, much, was very fascinated by the village of Ushkuli and people living there at that time. You know it probably now because there's tourism going on. At that time there was not much tourism. It was down on the down uh, fall. Um, and uh, I wanted to visit Ushkuli in the winter time. Not in the summer time, but in the winter time when there was nobody. And there were really only a few families living there in the winter time. Uh, like some families live now in uh, Tusheti or in Hepsoveti, as you know, just uh, really locked up only in the deep snow. And the same situation it was for Shkuli, especially at that time. And another story that I had found was, um, that I already had found in the 90s, was that suddenly I just took a wrong way in Ajara and ended up at a, at a pension, I don't know, a pension home or something, I don't know what you call that. Um, I was just looking for, for an access to the sea to the Black Sea in Ajar, between Kogoleti and uh, Batumi. And in Swane I ended up at this house where there were only, I was going to the steps up and suddenly saw something strange here, uh, and it was a home for the blind. So in this whole house were the only blind people, which was quite interesting because if you go into a washing room and you want to brush your teeth or you want to wash your hands, there are other mirrors and everything. You just, some, just things that you normally you always have, you suddenly notice something is strange, something is different here. They play chess, they play, they made all the kind of things, but they all made it as blind people, which was quite interesting. Uh, for me it was an experience, I tried to make an interview with a, with a blind person playing chess, and I thought, Stefan, that's, that's, that's a great idea, because you have an action, as a, you know, interviews as a filmmaker, you think it's always nice to have a special situation, it's not like somebody sitting here very serious and is talking to you, but you want to have a little situation, you want to, some people have seen the last film, know that I've done that with a little Volga, that I gave uh, Isha Zarkashvili and uh, Bezina Ibanishvili a little model of uh, the Volga 21 in their hand, and said, what is that, what do you think about that, what does that mean for the future of Georgia, and then they had to react and do something, and so I thought it would be a good idea to play chess with somebody during an interview, and it turned out to be the worst idea ever, because of course he knows exactly how to play chess, and I'm not such a good chess player as they are. So I always ended up thinking, what can I do? What would not be totally stupid, and I couldn't concentrate on my questions. <laughs> but he was easily, always very fast doing the next move, and I again had to think what I'm going to do now. Uh, so this is something that was for me a very uh, funny situation with the blind people at that time. Uh, and in the end, it's, uh, it's, it ended up to be four stories. And uh, my idea was uh, to um, find a topic that people here in the Caucasus live in it as if the rest of the world, they can go on the internet, they can do uh, whatever fast they want to do. But there are areas in Georgia or in the Caucasus where it doesn't matter because if there are five meters of snow and if there are avalanches coming down, it doesn't matter what else is going on. You just have to see that you have a warm house, that you have a safe house. You have just some ordinary things that every human being needs, but there are certain 
relationship, you want to have a partner that you love, you want to have that your family is fine. So there are certain values I think that we all share, no matter whether we live in the 20th century, 21st century or the 19th century. And this is why I chose at the end areas, four different areas, that live as if they would be in another time. And this is why the film is called On the Edge of Time. And uh, the third story was in Pakistan. I uh, had the chance because I had uh, done three TV documentaries for German television in all around the Caucasus. So that's why I'm in Chechnya, I've been in Chechnya, I've been in uh, Dagestan, in, on the Ebrus, in uh, Kavadino Balkari, uh, in also uh, in, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan in different areas. And uh, so I knew quite a different people. And so through these collections, I was able to get to one of these villages in the North Caucasus where they live under the rules of the Sharia. And of course, again, a very topic quite interesting today. Uh, and at that time, for me, it was interesting because it, I was told that there they have a, a special school for young kids. And all the young kids of Dagestan who want to become Imam had to go to, and that's when they are being taught what does it mean to, to live under the Sharia. And so we decided to film in that village. Um, and the fourth story uh, it was um, for me important. Uh, that was sorry. No. And the fourth story was in Azerbaijan because I had heard that the biggest oil platform in the world, in the world is in Azerbaijan, and it's not by uh, ExxonMobil or by BP or any other of the big uh, giants, but that it's a very old oil company that the Soviets started that because the uh, Caspian Sea isn't as deep as usually, and they build a whole city out in the sea. Uh, and the city is, uh, some of you might have seen it because in one of the James Bond movies they use it because it's so surrealistic. If you see the Soviet old oil platforms which were built in the 1940s and 1950s, and people until this day are working there with technique from the 1960s and 1970s. So this were the four stories, the blind people, the village of Oshkuri in the winter time, the, the kids in Dagestan that want to live under the Sharia, and the oil story, which made up my fourth film. And I just uh, want to show you the short trailer from the DVD because, of course, there's always bonus material, and one of the bonus material in the DVDs is the trailer. So you just look, it's a very short trailer, and you just to see some impressions. Stayed and he also wanted to leave. 
and the palace would have been all by themselves. It ended up now today, 2014, two of the sons have moved back. They have a two-story hotel, they have uh, hot showers, they, uh, they have nice rooms. I made for them a website, they have, people can book for them uh, rooms in their, in their house. So it's also a story that always connects me and uh, film. I made in 2000, 2001 and uh, just four weeks ago I was uh, at the wedding of the family that I, that I met there. So sometimes uh, films don't uh, really let you go. Um, the last film, uh, some people uh, probably have seen it. Uh, it was uh, the whole start of this film was in 2011. You have to know I'm preparing at the moment a fiction film here in Georgia. Um, I uh, have been doing a lot of research uh, about uh, there was a lemonade store. George is not very well. The uh, Laritze lemonade store. Uh, and uh, I did a lot of research about this film, about the history. Uh, and I was writing with two scriptwriters at the end, and with, with one writer together, with uh, three Georgians. We uh, had been writing a comedy uh, in the style of Cisper and Tebi, The Blue Mountains. I don't know if some of you, of you might know this Georgian film. It's a comedy uh, which is only played in a publishing house. And we want to make a comedy, the whole film is only played in the Laritza Lemonade store. And the whole idea is that there were not only the lemonades that everybody knows about, but there were also very secret lemonades which they supplied the area with which, which they kind of uh, arranged that uh, Yuri Gagarin was able to fly uh, and be the first man in space, that they won the Second World War, the Russians only because they had a very, very special lemonade that was done in the lemonade shop in the BBC. So it's a really a very, very strange comedy film that we want to do. Is that a fiction or a documentary? It's a fiction. <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 good question. Uh, because because uh, uh, I am not a filmmaker, film, film and it's very difficult in Germany if you are one time in a drawer to get the drawer to jump out of the drawer and suddenly start to make fiction movies. It's not so easy. So it might be really that I have to tell them it's a documentary to get the money and then I can get the fiction. That's a little bit what I'm trying to do at the moment. So we'll see that. But when I was preparing for that film, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy was uh, here in 2011. Uh, and suddenly I heard the rumors that Bizina actually would go into politics. I first didn't believe it, um, and, uh, but anyway I said, Stefan, something is happening in the country. Everybody was sure Misha would do the Putin way and that uh, everything would go in a very clear way. Everybody knew, okay, we know what's going on. And suddenly well, there was a surprise going on that uh, Bizina went into politics. And I said, Stefan, you are a documentary filmmaker. You cannot just think of, of your lemonade right now. You have to do something. And this is why I started exactly on Sarkozy. So on the day when he was here, I started to film. Uh, and this, in the end, out of this film uh, came out this film, Spoolie Street Gazette, and this came Full Speed Westworld, um, which most of you uh, have seen, which we saw the beginning pictures. Uh, and uh, the idea was to show how a country like Georgia is trying to find its way to the West. Is it the right way? How should one change the way? Which speed should a country take like that? to take Georgia only as an example, because I think whether it's Moldova, whether it's the Ukraine, whether it's another country, Belarus, uh, it doesn't matter. The idea is often exactly the same thing. There are people that, young people that just have their iPhone, they have their friends in Paris or in America or in London, they don't want to go back to the old times. There are people that are very religious or that are in, in, in the church that have their opinions, uh, which are totally opposite. We have intellectuals in all these countries that, uh, again, think of history, uh, put everything into a certain kind of connections. We have the gay movement, we have the anti-gay movement, we have uh, politicians that are very close to the Russians, we have politicians that are very close to, Amer to Americans. So there's these different kind of structures that we see in Georgia, we can see also in other countries. And to put this all in one box, I uh, thought I already had bought my car in 2009. Uh, and my car is an old Volga 21. And uh, this is why this whole film is about the Volga 21. And I said that everybody who should be in this film, he doesn't need to sit at the table like in the first film, but everybody has to sit in the car. Misha didn't want to sit in the car, because he didn't want to sit in an old Soviet car, so he only shows the car in his hand. But Pizina did. So this is why you have seen the scene at the beginning when Pizina uh, enjoyed at least driving the Volga uh, to Rome, at least one little little circle. But maybe we just see a little bit in the, um, uh, I want to take you a little bit uh, on the ride, you can say, 
because um, there was a lot of work being done for the bonus program for the DVD because we also did a website together with Arthur for that. You just have to see when it's when the start of this radius. So it's really cool. Yeah, okay. So, oh yeah, okay. Let me go back first. That must be the worst presenter of films ever. Let's see what I have. Let me go to the title. Okay. So usually you start the whole thing, you are, you are in my car, you can decide which language you learn if you want. I hope it works now to put it on English. There you go. And then you have the possibility for this film, either if you watch it on a computer, you should put on 2.0. If you have it on a DVD player for television, you should put the 5.1, that you have the whole uh, sound. Uh, or you can go to the bonus material. And in the bonus material, for example, uh, we have the trailer, which you have seen already. We have a slideshow, uh, which maybe we can put on the slideshow for a second, because there you can see a little bit how we were shooting the film. Um, so you see a little bit of the protagonists that you already have seen in the trailer. This was uh, when we were trying to, to film uh, Vizina. It was very difficult to work with Vizina because we never got uh, it managed at the beginning. We let me wait for eight months until I finally got the interview that I needed. Misha was much, much easier, I can say. But on the other hand, when I was at Misha's place, he didn't want to hear any word from me. He just, he just wanted to tell himself his story. While well, Vizina was much more open, it was much more. Uh, But at least with Misha I was able to fly the helicopter. That's in the end the interview with Bizina, where it was quite naturally. Of course the proud film crew at Bizina's up there we made it. And the, most, and the best car, as you heard. Bizina said I had the best car. And this is shooting from the bonus material also which we did. So the whole thing was the whole film was shot in a period of two years, uh, from 2011 to 2013, uh, really until uh, Bizina stepped down as prime minister. So it really shows also this uh, cohabitation period between Misha and Bizina. And this is just to prove you that I can make it with my car to Budapest. <laughs> Maybe we should now go to the map. And if you look to the map, I want to show you a little bit the idea uh, that uh, I had because we had I had shot much more material than was able, I was able to put in my documentary. Uh, and I always had short topics that had to deal with the future of Georgia. And uh, in the end, we took seven different parts of this map that are not part of the film but where we are now showing a little example that has to do with the future of Georgia. So you have in this DVD uh, collection, you have the 1990s, you have the year 2000, you have the year 2011 to 2013, and in the bonus material you can see, okay, what's to come? What are the ideas that right now are topics? And one of them is, uh, if you look at Pelissi maybe, yeah, I think at the left side, at the left side of the yeah, exactly, you just press it. So we did <laughs> Never in the city's long history has Belisi seen so much change as it has over the past few years. Michael Saakashvili will go down in history for the countless glass buildings which were erected during his presidency. But there are other ambitious architectural projects planned for the future. Hazaratza chairs the supervisory board of Georgia's second largest bank, 
and he and his businesses are one of the country's largest employers. The Smart Bank has discovered the benefits of investing in energy efficient buildings. We had some Danish engineers over, and they showed us in an experiment that the Georgians use more energy to heat their houses than the Danes. This is astonishing, because we always think we have so much sun down here. At the same time, we are wasting this energy. This is now the first example of its kind, with ecological principles in mind. We decided to call it the Green City. The Green City's first 144 flats are almost ready. The building is expected to go on for 10 to 15 years. If all goes to plan, 6,000 families will live here. And every flat will boast a view out over the city. Mamuka keeps his partners in Amsterdam, Paris and London regularly informed of progress with the building of environmentally friendly development. Spaces and using renewable energies such as solar power, wind, and water. The engineers influence the architecture to such an extent that these homes will only use half of the energy used by any other homes being built in Tbilisi. In a society where sustainability is as alien a concept as recycling, Mamuka's green city has a long road ahead of it and whether or not the idea catches on remains to be seen. So you can see the style is quite different. Uh, I wouldn't call it a documentary movie, it's just information, little information pieces. But the idea is that people can, on the DVD, go to different places. We have all the ski developments that are going on in Georgia. We have a little story about Georgian wine. We have a story about the Gustavo Steel plant, what is going on. So we have different stories uh, in, on the map that people that are interested in Georgia, what to go on the more war, can go to the DVD line. Can you go back? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I just want to finish off uh, my presentation with also showing those photographs something for young people. Uh, and so, uh, that are not that much interested in the politics, and I also want to say, so we decided on music, if you go with the music, mm -hmm. we have a couple of popular bands that were popular in the last 10 years, um, and we wanted to just show different kind of uh, popular music that they have here. Maybe you can just go to Gachaman, for example. And if you press one of the music clips, then you only see the same pictures, but you have different kind of music that is being done by Georgian music groups. Gacha already has a contract in Paris with a Paris label, but the other groups are in Dawn. And then you can kind of hang in the background, have some pictures going on on the Volga, and have some actual Georgian music. Vizina should see my talent. And he should really see us. Please. But uh, so far, you know, Georgian society is a little bit different. Georgians give money, yes, but only to family members. And so it's very, very difficult to get money in Georgia. And Germans, of course, tell me, Stefan, sorry, but that is a Georgian movie that you're telling us about. And Germans have different topics. That's not a German topic, what you're telling us about. We might give you a little money in the end, but that's a Georgian film. Georgia has at least start the financing. Uh, and so it's a little difficult for me to, to get this done because in, as you probably all know who live here in Georgia, it's very difficult to become part of society because you're always civil scraping. You will always stay kind of I think the foreigner in the country. And uh, you can have friends, everything, but you always are the foreigner. And that, you see this very easily when you like me. I'm not, I'm not working for any organization here, I'm not doing I'm not earning any money in Georgia. Um, uh, so I really only here on a private basis and it's very, very difficult for me as an independent filmmaker to get my feet in the ground to earn money in the country. So that's the point. Can you talk briefly about how the three films were received by Georgians during the uh, They are all three films that are sisters are the same story. They want to give it the broadcasting time and they want to give the money to the people that they know. 
and they don't want to buy the movie. It doesn't matter whether the movie is good or not good. If you don't have the name, blah, 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 who wants a film? So this is uh, um, the experience that I've made with all three movies, which is a little bit disappointing, um, because I think it should be films that Georgians will see. So this is also a reason why I'm saying, come on, Stefan, you are investing money now, but now every, every Georgian family can buy it. Now it's in 200 stores. Uh, it's in Sulakowi. Um, they have 200 stores that you can order now the book. When you order the books, you can also order this DVD now, whether you are in Rustavi or Zodidi or wherever, you just go to the local bookstore and, or you can call the, the hotline of Sulakowi and you can order the, the DVD. So this is a chance how I can get the word out, how I can, uh, how Georgians will be able to see the film. Um, at least Georgians that have enough money, because the problem is that, of course, these DVDs, the question was, should I do it a bit cheap, or should I do it more high-end? And if I do it cheap, it is the same thing as with high-end. I think in two weeks it will be illegally online anyway, so people can watch it probably somewhere in the internet. But the idea was to have it as a present, or that people will have something that they want to keep, and that they want to have in their hand, and then it's different than just DVD. Maybe I'll just show you. And uh, so the idea was at the end, this would be in a shuba, I would call it. And uh, it, 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 I didn't want to have a lot of pictures on it, we wanted to have it to look like a book. I'm really like on the market here. Uh, right. what, you really want to have it like, like in a book format, and that you really have it uh, not with a lot of advertising on it. And that inside you have the three film posters, and that uh, you have always a motive of the film, like this the wheel of the car. Uh, and for the first film, you have a Hachapuri, and for the second film, you have the hat. Uh, do we have it here? The Swanitian hat? I think it's here. Yeah, so we have, we have the, Swan the Swanitian hat that's turning around. So I think we have these little things that uh, you don't have if you watch the film literally online. <laughs> so there are, there are the little tricks. And we worked the last uh, three weeks on this one here. And this is a 32 page booklet of all three languages Georgian, English, and German with uh, background stories. So stories that are not in the film, but for example, the story, background story of the Tamada, we have the background story of the Germans <coughs> that have been living here in the 19th century, 20th century. We have uh, the story of Ushkuli in here, uh, West here, and a little bit about the blind people. So the people that are interested in the country of Georgia uh, can have this as a perfect souvenir. That was the idea. So it was not the idea to only have the DVD, but to really give something, so I already said, uh, so far I hope by, uh, uh, by joke, but uh, I can go now from this planet because I have left something. Mm -hmm. My little baby, my baby to Georgia is this one here. Uh, so for me it's quite an emotional moment, of course. And uh, now I'm going to do the advertising for the Sudaka uh, selling, um, because the thing is selling in, in Europe for 30 euros, it's already going quite fine, it's selling for 30 euros. Uh, so we did the same price in Georgia, which will be 69, uh, so 70 value for, the, for, the, for each of these DVD, meaning three DVDs with the booklet and so on. Uh, but we had a problem because the factory that was doing it, is, uh, the problem is it's Germans. So I really have to say, not only Georgians are making mistakes, also the, also the Germans uh, can do quite big mistakes. And it ended up, uh, can we get the DVD on the other one? It's a very special edition. It's only 100 pieces, the first 100 pieces. But because of this mistake, we decided to make a special price for, for the people who are buying this one. So it's only 55 lari, only 55 lari for this one. Uh, and uh, I can, because uh, I also wanted to have it out for Christmas, so that people can give it out as Christmas presents. So this is why we have exactly 100 pieces. So who wants one can buy it, and who 
in general, you're going to have the good ones, the totally fine ones. So if anybody doesn't want his special edition, he can, <laughs> he can uh, contact uh, either Sula Kauri or can contact us through the website, and he can exchange it against, uh, without any uh, other costs uh, against. Uh, against. Do you say oh, that? Oh, oh. Oh. You can exchange, sorry, typical German. Uh, you can exchange it for the, the real one. Okay? Any more questions? Well, not about, about selling the DVD, about me and my work. Uh, I have one question sure. about <laughs> you first. Sure. You just mentioned in part of your, uh, your uh, opinion or uh, uh, feelings about how, how, what it would mean to be a uh, foreigner in yeah. Georgia. But we would go to back to your characters, your first 1990 film, where you found the two Germans. Uh, uh, if someone would to interview the same interview with you, what you would, or what would be your answer? What does it mean for you to be foreign in Georgia? Or what does it mean Georgia for you? Yeah. For a long time, long perspective. What it means for me to be? Yes, yes. And you partially said something about that it's all foreigners are staying foreigners uh, in Georgia or wherever. But, uh, yeah, although what, what these Germans, these Germans that were living here, yeah. they have been living so long here okay. in the country that they always were called the Germans, but they were called Nashi, because they were living here in the Soviet Union, they were living in the Soviet times, so they still were accepted as part of the Soviet. And I think it's always still very fascinating when I talk to, to Georgians, and they say, yeah, you are, you are a good Swahili, and he's Russian. And I say, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Russians are not good Swahili. We are good Swahili, but not the Russians. And I think that's quite an interesting psychological thing that is still going on. In the future, that might change. But uh, if you think about it, okay. <laughs> These are the things that uh, probably uh, will change. No, but I, uh, as, I, as I experienced it, as I said, um, um, uh, that uh, for me, especially, it's difficult when I'm trying to work here or when I do things like that. And I always see people say, oh, how nice a German who speaks Georgian. Some, it's nice maybe for a year, for two years. But if you live here for such a long time and still, as soon as you start speaking, everybody is looking at you with eyes, and it's nice that he speaks Georgian. Uh, I think we should get to another point where people look at what is this guy doing, why is he here, what is this person, and not he's just some German guy who speaks German. Totally agree. Totally agree. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for being here. Please spread the word out that I want, that my debt will get down a little bit, that people will. will uh, you have different possibilities. Uh, we have a website, georgiantrilogy.com. That's right, you can press the button, and who is doing that today or tomorrow will get the DVD before Christmas, that I can guarantee, in all of Europe. Uh, so that's a possibility to, to send presents to some people. Uh, and of course, um, uh, our friends from Sula Kauri Publishing House, they have brought some uh, discs, so who wants to buy the special edition for the special price uh, can do that tonight. Well, thank you for coming. Okay.